And so we're, we're, so for right now, for instance, we're probably experiencing the emissions that were put into the climate system uh, maybe 30 or 40 years ago or so. And so we seem to only be admitting more uh, emissions. I, I know that we have made these political agreements between nations like the Paris Climate Accords uh, to cut emissions by a certain year, but I don't see really any political, serious political action to really stem this because I think more than anything, it's a response to a an ability to have access to cheap oil. And that to me is more than anything, this is what's happening. Um, but my, my, again, my main fear, and I think this is the fear of a lot of people, is that because of this lag and because we are headed for more warming in the near future, that that species just won't be able to adapt to those rapid changes. And, and, and that's my main fear, my main anxiety that I have about this whole system, this whole, uh, this whole situation, I should say, is that, yes, there has been a steady global warming trend. But again, I think that some of the models that you mentioned, let's say, for instance, the IPCC, um, they have models that projected, for instance, that the Arctic sea ice would, would disappear much further into the future than it actually what it is currently showing. So it seems that there's certain variables and certain certain things that they're not really considering when they make these models. Um, and that to me is my main concern is that we're going to be blindsided by major catastrophic changes in our climate system. Yeah, but what you're doing is you're saying that I'm going to, uh, let's forget any model and do a linear extrapolation of the last 50 years, let's say, okay. of climate, um, well, 40 years, which has really been pretty steady warming, although it's varied a bit from year to year and decade to decade. So let's let's make a projection from that line upwards. And that just to happen, it does happen to be, coincide pretty well with the model predictions of the future. But just extrapolate that line. What you're saying is you think that it's going to get much worse than that line in the future. You've got no evidence to say that it's going to get much worse than that line, then it's going to get um, much better than that line. In other words, it won't be nearly as bad as people are predicting because an unusual, unexpected event is just as likely to be a good surprise as a bad surprise. So I wouldn't, um, but I don't want to base my judgment on either thinking things are going to be much worse than I, my general expectation or much better than my general expectation. Um, let's go best we can with what we actually know. Um, and what we know is that there are many potential issues that arise from um, increased climate warming and we should stop it. I completely agree with you. You said that your anxiety is about species having problems with climate change. Well, I agree completely. I perhaps wrote one of well, I did write one of the most prominent papers that's ever been published on the extinction risk to species from climate change. And I still hold to that, even though I'm generally optimistic about the biological world surviving the human epoch um, reasonably well. I'm still expecting that 10 to 20 percent of all species could well be driven extinct as a result of human caused climate change. Um, nearly all of those species are a um, bit like that Algerian nuthatch. They're species that live in small geographic areas, often at the tops of tropical mountains, and they're being forced up and up and up. They've got nowhere to go, and eventually they're going to die out unless we intervene uh, individually on, the, on behalf of those species. And my guess is that we're going to do very little of that, or at least we might do it for a few vertebrates, but most animals and plants are just going to have to take their chance and we're going to lose a bunch of them. Does that mean that I think that the biological systems of the planet are going to fail? Absolutely not, because the temperature, if you look at the geographic distribution of biological diversity, in the hotter, the warmer parts of the planet tend to have more species in and the planet's getting warmer. And we're seeing already at a very rapid rate, we're seeing species moving towards the poles, away in a direction away from the equator, the equators towards the poles. And so 
because there are simply more species in hotter parts of the world than there are in colder parts of the world, on average, that is increasing the local diversity in, and regional diversity in many places. I'm not saying that's desirable, but what, the other thing is that um, drought, of course, and availability of rainfall is a major issue. And in some places, new droughts are going to be, uh, at least from a human perspective, catastrophic. However, on average across the planet's surface, the rainfall is slightly going up with climate change. And that is an absolute certain, it's a, a physical certainty. When the climate of the world is warmer, more water evaporates from the oceans. It condenses in the atmosphere still, and eventually it falls as rain. And so even though some parts of the world are becoming drier and will become drier, and that will cause severe problems for people and often for the wildlife in those same areas, on average, the world's getting warmer and very slightly wetter. And that tends to be good for biological diversity. So it can be simultaneously true, it seems like a paradox, but it can be simultaneously true that the average diversity in any location the number of species in a particular state or county or whatever it can go up slightly but the number of species on the planet can go down if those um, poor inhabitants of the top of a tropical mountain die out uh, without being helped okay yeah well thank you for uh putting it in that that way i i i guess my um uh, yeah, <laughs> I I just wanted to ask you some questions regarding that because um, I think oftentimes I get locked into a a particular way of looking at things that can be uh, rather bleak, and I I, uh, I think I oftentimes look at the short term effects of of say global climate change versus maybe the long term uh, what we could potentially see. And like you said, you know, you, we don't know the future. We don't know what's going to come about as a result of this. Um, so I think what I'm trying to say is. Yes, it is actually sensible to think about bad things, worry about them and avoid them. But it is also worth thinking about new opportunities and how we might maximize those, given that we know that the world is going to change. And we rather than we spend all of our time trying to stop bad things happening, we can actually miss out on opportunities to make things better under the new situation that we discover we're now living in.